Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Weaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue, a little bit of departure from what we typically cover here on the channel. We kind of culminate everything within the channel on the Friday Vlog. So if this is your first time here, I'd like to welcome you along with those frequent viewers. Guys, go ahead and click on that watermark right down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe to the channel as well as clicking that notification bell so you guys will know when the next Friday vlog is available along with additional content that's here on the channel. This week in gaming news, I reached out to Daybreak, specifically asking them about Just Survive, and the response was very polite, very cordial, very friendly. However, it didn't necessarily answer my question as much as it suggested that any official announcements released by Daybreak can be found on the official website and or in relation to Z1 Battle Royale or H1 Z1 games, we could see whatever information and statements were released there on Steam. So I didn't get a definitive answer. And um, so that's essentially what we're working with right now because as we understand it, even with the current Battle Royale, it is just kind of a maintenance mode type situation. In other words, uh, Daybreak is going to be, you know, just maintaining the game. There doesn't seem to be like any future development or, or, or other types of uh, releases that the game could potentially have. So as of right now, we really don't know what their attitude and disposition is with Just Survive because as far as we know and as far as they're probably concerned, Just Survive was sunset back in October. So this may be why they may not even have addressed it. It is just isn't something that is has even really kind of uh, come to their attention outside of the fact that uh, Networks Gaming, Nant G, was going to revive the game. Of course, they were, gonna, they were working out the details and, and all the legal matters that they needed to be able to do that. But now that it's back in, uh, Daybreak's hands, Daybreak could say, hey, yeah, we sunset the game back in October. Now, of course, perhaps they will address it because many of us have been asking about it. So hopefully we can uh, generate enough attention uh, on this topic that we'll hear from Daybreak. So you guys can uh, reach out through Reddit, reach out through Twitter, and uh, just uh, see if we can't get some type of response from them sometime soon. This week, President Trump met with Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, and based upon the reports, it seems that they had a very cordial, very uh, good exchange uh, during this particular meeting. And it, as we know, Jack Dorsey was on Joe Rogan's show not too long ago, and people were a little disappointed by the exchange that was going on between Joe and Jack and said that uh, maybe he was uh, not giving Jack really the harder questions that he should have been asking him considering the activity of Twitter and uh, their particular position when it comes to their particular views. And so Jack was invited back onto Joe Rogan's show. As you guys may recall, Jack brought along Vijaya and then Joe Rogan had Tim Pool on there and they had far more hard hitting questions, far more hard hitting uh, things for Jack to answer and Vijaya to answer it was rather an interesting dialogue. Now, Tim hasn't really uh, gone into it all that much since then, so I don't know what all has changed with Twitter and what their attitude is. I know that they kind of reached out to Tim and asked him a few things about certain groups of individual, but Tim said, hey, look, you know, I don't want to really uh, give out any particular information that could, uh, you know, violate any of my... Um, business practices as a journalist. So there was some dialogue, there were some things going on. They were asking Tim a lot of questions and I think Tim was a very good representative of it. Now, of course, Tim does lean left and of course, so does Joe Rogan. But it was interesting because this discussion obviously that took place there this week with President Trump is gonna be dealing really with conservatives, moderates, and the Republicans and maybe even certain individuals on the right. But nonetheless, we all know that there are groups of individuals who can kind of, you know, are the bad apples within any type of group group or society. And I'm thinking about like all these years, how the internet was such a great and amazing place for people to get along and, and to share ideas and concepts and just to do all kinds of things. And within the last several years, it has become more of a battleground, more of a culture war. Very unfortunate because it is usually very small groups of individuals, very small groups of special interests that are doing this. But as far as the meaning itself, it's really hard to really understand what all may have happened or what Jack may have uh, decided to do or what President Trump uh, may have worked out with Jack or how they're going to approach this now. 
We know, for example, that President Trump has tried to use his own personal account to block certain groups of individuals, which was a big uh, deal of controversy, but any private citizen is able to utilize the tools that are made available to us on Twitter, and that is the ability to uh, block individuals because these are our own personal spaces, and if we don't, people, if we don't want people invading that space and just kind of uh, you know, polluting it up and making it toxic and ridiculous, then obviously we have the ability as uh, members of the that group to utilize the tools that Twitter gives us to block certain individuals. Now, as president of the United States, that might be a little different because he's a public figure and Jack wants to say that Twitter is an open forum, which is kind of a bit of a contradiction because either you're a private entity who can exercise certain uh, rights of your own, or you're either a public forum, which is kind of makes you a bit of a utility or monopoly. And then, you know, you have to comply with uh, certain different rules because you got to allow certain people to say what they want to say, despite the fact that it might be unpleasant. But nonetheless, I thought that was really neat that uh, they did have this meeting. I hope a lot was able to be uh, accomplished through this. I don't know how much of Twitter uh, is, I don't know how much of, of Twitter is going to change, but I think that Twitter is really suffering right now and they're really, look, they're really looking to reach out to anyone that they can, particularly the president I think was a good image, a good what they call optics move for Jack to do. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. I'm really curious how this is going to work and how this is going to affect certain people. So we'll certainly keep an eye on it, but I did think that was a very interesting story and I'll include that down there in the published section below. As of this week, we have learned that Joe Biden will make his official announcement on April the 25th. That will be Thursday of this week. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how this is all going to play out because Right now, the Democratic Party is very fractured between the progressives, between the moderates, and between the business elite types within the Democratic Party. You have individuals like uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Elon Omar battling it out with old school, old Democrat uh, Nancy Pelosi. And so we have these kind of things going back and forth in the background, as well as the particular individual candidates who are looking to uh, get recognition and get attention for their particular causes and their particular direction for the country. Now, we've also learned this week uh, quite emphatically that Bernie supporters, the Bernie bros, and even individuals with Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren or any of the other candidates, their people are saying, hey, either our candidate is going to be nominated or bust, more particularly with Bernie, because you gotta remember, in the last presidential election, uh, Bernie was pretty much thrown under the bus, and so his supporters were very angry and just went directly with voting with Trump because they just didn't like the way the Democratic Party treated Bernie. And with the Democratic Party as fractured as they are, I'm not really sure what all Joe Biden is going to be able to do. Now, to his credit, Joe Biden is really kind of just known for him being uh, the vice president of Barack Obama. And, of course, just kind of being a little bit of the gaffer that he is. And then, of course, the Me Too movement is suffering a great deal because of a lot of the imagery that has been put out there, uh, the creepy old Joe type images that have been going around. So his uh, favorability has actually dropped below Bernie's. Now, I was pretty confident that before all of these images and things were coming out, that Joe was already ahead. And if he had gone ahead, I was curious if they were just going to go ahead and throw Sanders under the bus. They're already doing that already with Tulsi Gabbard. And I feel really badly for her because she is, you know, a really kind of the more um, disciplined, more moderate, uh, more practical, more common sense type of a candidate that we see. But, you know, of course, like I said, with the three different camps, you have each of them wanting their particular candidate to go forward and to succeed. And I don't really know how well they're going to be able to pull this off because with this fracture within the Democrats, they're going to have to make their pick. Is it going to be Joe Biden or is it going to be Bernie Sanders? Is it going to be Kamala Harris? You know, who exactly are they going to pick out of the rather wide variety of individuals? Now, I would argue that individuals like Beto, and others who, who have made their own announcements is that they're really just trying to get re name recognition for 2024, which is what a lot of these people kind of try to do is they go ahead and test the waters early and they kind of see what their moves might be in 2024. But until the Democrats get their house in order, I really don't see uh, very much of cohesion of these groups of individuals uh, coming together because right now we're already seeing the Democrats trying to find ways to um, 
change uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's uh, district so that maybe she doesn't get elected next, next time around because of the type of uh, rabble rousing that she's stirred up. But nonetheless, right now, Joe Biden will be making his announcements on Thursday, April the 25th. If you guys want to read more about it, I'm going to leave links down there in the uh, published section below, along with the actual articles upon his actual announcement. All right, guys, so just in channel news here as we wrap it up, I want to thank all you guys for your continued support and activity here on the channel. And I've been trying to keep the topics rather light and just kind of giving you guys got the observation kind of view. Uh, try to approach it with a very common sense, very neutral, independent perspective. Of course, I have my own thoughts. I have my own opinions, my own ways of approaching uh, political uh, ideology and philosophy, of course, because I have my own. But nonetheless, I like bringing you these types of topics just to make you aware of certain things that are going on in the background that you may not necessarily be aware of or that the media may be uh, trying to draw you towards another direction and we see that happen a lot so overall I want to thank all you guys for your continued participation here and uh, activity that goes on there uh, down in the comments section uh, you know allowing you guys to share your own thoughts and ideas on some of these topics but I'm glad that you guys do enjoy the Friday vlogs it allows me to touch on other topics on the channel as well like things that are going on with gaming or just overall in general what's going on here so I want to thank all you guys specifically for that and that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. I want to thank all you guys for the likes, shares, and comments that you provide each week. And I would encourage you guys right now to click on that channel icon right there if you haven't subscribed already and subscribe along with clicking that notification bell so you guys will know when the next Friday vlog is available along with additional content that's here on the channel. And I will see you guys next Friday.